Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. We got a 2005 uh, Ford Explorer here with a 4.0. Um, so we're going to be changing brakes and rotors. If you need to know those part numbers, the rotor 54094 and the brakes NKD833. Both of those are Duralast. So we're going to start off by removing the cap on the brake cylinder, on the master cylinder. And that's because when we push this back, this cylinder, we're going to be pushing the fluid back up into the chamber, forcing the air out that direction. That guarantees all of the air is out and we won't have to bleed these brakes. So the tools we'll be using, flathead screwdriver, that's to pull your hub cap off before you get your tire off. You've got the impact here, or you can use a four-way or 13 16 to pull your tire off. The C-clamp, that's going to be pushing the master cylinder piston in, or slave cylinder, and then you have your 14 millimeter and your 18 millimeter. We're going to start off by taking off these two 14 millimeter bolts, one at the top, one at the bottom of the caliper. The 18 millimeter will be for the second set of two bolts on the back side to release this side of the caliper. It's a two-piece caliper, so we're going to pull the front off first. So let's get that off. Let's don't touch that bleeder screw, leave it alone, and uh, pull those two bolts out. Okay, so we removed those two 14 millimeter bolts there. Stick your screwdriver in there and just give her a little bump, and that first half of that caliper is going to come right off. We'll let it fall back out of the way. That hose is extremely tight there, it, it's or strong. It's going to hold it for you. Now we'll go ahead and pull these two four, four, or 18 millimeters, removing this piece. Your brakes will pop out of position at this time. You can go ahead and pull those out of the way and we'll be getting rid of those. So now let's pull this piece and take this second part off. This way we can get a hold of this caliper, otherwise it's not going to come out. You get it. All right, let me pull those. Okay, now that we have both those bolts out, we're going to go ahead and just set that aside. That's our back piece that we were talking about. Some of the shoes come with the new clips, some do not, so don't pull these off until you know and you've opened your box and see that the new clips are in there. Some don't need to be replaced so they don't come with them. At this point, just grab your rotor, take it off, set it aside, let's set the new one on there. Okay, so we set the new rotor up there, now we can go ahead and put this back piece back on and let's throw those two bolts on. Okay, so here is our old caliper. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take one of those old brake shoes, you're going to sit it in there backwards just like that. Then we're going to squeeze this together right here, nice and slow, because if you go quick, you're going to overflow that master cylinder up there with fluid. And uh, this is one of the reasons why we don't top off that master cylinder until the job is done. Because the odds are you're probably not going to need to add any fluid to it either, because as these come out, they create more space for fluid. So that fluid level up there will get lower. When we push this back, we will be filling it back in and forcing all the air out backwards. So let's go ahead and get a clamp on that. Okay, and there's our setup. We're just the shoe and the clamp. And then we just give this a twist and you'll see as, as I tighten it, both those cylinders go down at the exact same time. If you try this and you're doing one cylinder at a time, the other cylinder is going to push up while you're coming down. So that's why it's important to use an old brake shoe. Even if the shoe has no meat on it, it's just a piece of metal. It's still going to work perfectly fine for this and you don't need to pay for any expensive tools. So let's get that down all the way. It's just about there and we'll get our new brake shoes on. Okay, when you stick this new shoe in, you're going to see there's a little tab right here that must push up as you're going in. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get that in. I fought it for a second and then I found the tab. So, whoops. So the bottom we're going to slide into place. The top will sit in there and you'll see it just, well, let's flip it around. You'll see that it just will not go in no matter what you do. It won't slide back. And that's because of this tab. Once you lift it up, she slides right back into place. I think you understand that. So now that we've pressed that down with the cylinder or with the, the C-clamp, that caliper will slide right on top of here. Make sure you push these in before you slide it forward, otherwise it won't fit. And then you can run your two 14 millimeters in and tighten those up. Okay, so that's it. Our rotor's on now. We'll touch that up with the rag. Now, at this process, what you're gonna wanna do, you can see this is still about half full, or half empty, I should say. I still need to do the other side. When I get done with the other side, you're gonna put the cap on. You're gonna push the brakes down three times slow. If you're starting from the top of the pedal to the floor, it's going to be about four seconds. One, two, three, four. Do that three times. Then start up the car and you'll realize at that point, as soft as the pedal is, it immediately gets hard. Then start up the car, do it again three times. By the time you get done with the second time before you do the third, your brakes will be adjusted properly and you'll be good to go. 
So I hope this video helps you out. Please click like, please click subscribe. Click on my name underneath this video for all my other how-to videos. And as always, guys, enjoy.